Hello, I. Oh, there we go. It's perfect. Uh, this is Leftovers Season Three, Episode Two. Don't be ridiculous. Don't be ridiculous. Don't be ridiculous. Don't be ridiculous. Anyway, um, I have a new screen which I can now adjust and move around. I was watching the show on a forty-inch giant that was like up here above me. So the, the camera angle is always down because I'm using webcam. But now I have a, a proper screen for this kind of thing. Smaller, um, but more functional. And and now the webcam is like right here, right in front, and right in front of us. And right in front of me. So now you look, I can be seen much easier and everything. This is fantastic. Now I can actually touch the freaking screen like that. That's great. The webcam. So anyway, uh, I was reading the comments, man. You know, cause I read I read the... I read the comments on every single video. Every single video. Even if I don't respond to all of them, I, I do read every single one. And I agree, Terry Nation, that this is the type of show that needs to marinate. You know? So it's a good thing I'm watching it uh, once a week. Yeah? We'll get, get, get a chance to really just to marinate in thing for a bit. Let it sink in a bit. So, speaking of which... I was thinking about it for I was I've been thinking about it all week and um it occurred to me after I finished the last episode who caught in the hit because we saw the good team remnant they were killed by a bomb right it was a, a missile from the freaking air now I'm pretty sure that was at fic right ATFEC or whatever the because they deal with cults and we know that they deal with them in an extreme prejudice just they they saw like the kind of people who just wiped them out and all that without any real um no negotiations just you know wham bam clean clean slate sounded like what they were at least from the first season uh, yeah we haven't really heard from them since that first season actually they haven't really we haven't really dealt with them but from what I had gathered from the first season, they seem like a type of people who just scorch earth kind of a season, kind of a a plan. Make the problem go away, is what the guy said. <clears throat> anyway, I was wondering if don't tell me if this is part of the story, but did Kevin call in the hit? It didn't occur to me until the end of the episode. But I was thinking about it later on. That's why I say marinate freaking let it marinate for a bit, but I was thinking about it afterwards, and then they mentioned that Kevin. Uh, oh yeah, it was it, it was the part at the end there where Kevin was talking to Tom about what happened. Well, Tom was talking to Kevin. He was saying that you you know what happened, you know. And then Kevin was Kevin gave him the bullshit story about how they smoked a cigarette and something about a bombing explosion, right? They're smoking cigarettes and a chemical explosion, boom, explosion. Whatever, but the way that Kevin said it, he—I don't think he—but it's pretty. To me, it sounded like he didn't. He didn't believe it. He was just saying what was on the read this card, you know, the on the prompter. He was just reading the the prepared statement like a drone. He was just very me mechanical, and you could tell Tom also does not believe that. And it made me think about who would have been able to call that hit in because I don't know about anybody who ran the place at the time. Uh, I don't know who... We didn't really meet the governors and mayors and whatever of Miracle Town, whatever. Right? I mean, I think John was sort of a self-appointed ruler of the place to me. It kind of felt like he kind of governed the area or something. Because he had so much power there with the fire department. But... Uh, he... Uh, but uh, I, I don't know, it just... It just uh, it seemed like somebody had to call them in to do this in the first place. I mean, I wonder if he did Kevin call in the freaking hit, you know? No, because he kind of sounded like he was reading off of that prompter mechanical thing because that's what the... I feel like Adfect told him to read that, you know? Um, and this goes back to season one. I actually watched that scene again from season one. I don't know what episode it was, but when he talks to, I think it was Officer... Uh, Agent Kalini or something like that. He talks to him on the phone. 
and he and he and they they talk about um we can make the your problem go away. So he had that in his back pocket for two seasons, and I wonder if he actually used it. And they just, you know, they, it's gonna be is it? I don't I don't know if it's gonna be part of the plot or not. So don't tell me if it is. But it feels like, you know, I was sitting around thinking about that. That could that would be um pretty nuts because that would change Kevin's. Kevin's character in a large way that he was willing to take out a bunch of people who technically didn't hurt anybody. They just kind of pissed people off by being there. Like an unwanted poster or something. Just in the way. You know, didn't really kill anybody. Not specifically. I don't think so. They just were there. Like objects in the way. Was that worth wiping them out by bombing? You know, I, I clearly Kevin doesn't believe that statement. I'm pretty sure, and it makes me wonder if he is not the one who called it in, so he's standing by that to protect himself and everybody else. Ooh, that's a that's a that's a dark rabbit hole to go down uh, for Kevin. Not to mention, uh, also on the phone, if I correct, if I remember, if I heard correctly, he also calls him Harvey, which is very weird, and it's a whole other freaking rabbit hole. To think about because his name is Garvey, and the last time he was called Harvey was inside of the Hotel Hell place. The place when he took the thing, went to that hotel place, and they called him Harvey in the assassination thing. And I swear, I swear, Dr. Clinton, right? he calls him Harvey in that scene. Remember that, right? right? Um, what's that about? That's crazy because we, we didn't get the whole Harvey thing into the next season, so I don't know what the hell it's supposed to mean. Uh, if he was calling him Harvey in the first season, it's, it's almost like the whole show was planned out from the beginning, which would be amazing if that is the case. Uh, then, then um, I don't know what that could mean, though. He was assassin when he was called Harley, Har Harvey, right? But then again, he did assassinate those guys. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, anyway, it's po it's a possibility that he may have called him the hit. That's why I'm going with it. That's why. That's why I figured, figured. Anyway, as I was thinking about that stuff, it was just going on in my head. I don't know what the Harvey thing is, though. but it's really, really cool. It's very trippy if the show has planned it all out like that ahead of time. That's incredible. I've never seen a show. I don't think I've ever seen a show plan everything all like that, like that far ahead. Um, it like seasons ahead. Final season connects back to the first season. Some kind of seed they dropped early on. Are you kidding me? So are we going to get more Harvey shit in this one or what? Anyway, that was uh, the recap of everything I've been thinking about. So season three, this is our uh, last episode. Holy shit, we, we start, oh, we ended up with um, what looks like Australia in the future. Nora, Nora looks old. She looks old and skin is all wrinkly and peeling off and stuff. And, um, she doesn't, you know, yeah, it's been, this has been years. So are we going to jump into the future? And, uh... Um, you know, there was something written on the barn. I forgot what it was, but I'm pretty sure we know that person. Oh, Marie or something. Isn't that the... I forgot what the name is, but isn't that um Matt's wife's name? I forgot what her name is. Marie? What's her name? Is it Marie? Anyway, I thought that was what was written on the church wall or whatever that wall was, the community garden thing. Anyway, just speaking out loud. So... What's that about? I don't know. That's what we're here to find out, right? And also... Oh, yeah. Matt's writing a book about Kevin. Not just any book, either. The freaking New New Testament. I never would have thought that... I would never occur to me that, that that's where the, where the story would go. But it makes perfect sense because they set that up. As much as it doesn't make sense, it makes perfect sense in the show. Because they set that up from the last season. It's good that they're addressing it though. That uh, him getting shot and surviving isn't just... Wasn't just to end that season in a crazy way. But also it was going to lead into this season. With him being a possible messianic figure. Jesus and all the shit like that. That was nuts. <clears throat> anyway. Um, what else was there? Was there anything else? There's a bunch of stuff. There's been a lot of stuff, but that's what I remembered most. Australian connection. Oh yeah, 
the uh, Dean got killed by the freaking. They got shot by the son. He was about to shoot him and all that, and then he got killed. And he's like, you changed, buddy, or something like that. You changed, man. I forgot what he said. You changed something, and he got killed. And then that was it. He just did. What was that about? What's the point of that? Is that going to happen? I feel like you don't do all that for no reason. Was that just to end that plot line, or is that going to connect to something bigger? I hope so, because that just seems like it just died right there. What the hell? What's the point of that? I was like, okay, fine, he's dead, so what? It's just not crazy? Unfortunately. That would suck, because that, you know. Well, the show does that a lot, though. You know? And there's a lot of open-ended, what felt like open-ended plot lines really just amount to people who, turns out, it's just more cult shit. They think they know what the truth is, but it, it's not really. They're just a bunch of people wandering around, right? It's like, like last season, man, that, that engineering stuff really still bothered me. The, uh... I love how there were just these random people who showed up in the story, but had nothing to do with the plot. It's like it's like a story outside the story. The whole geographic location, the idea that her place was connected to some kind of this Indian dude came in and claimed that the area that she lived in her house, they wanted to buy it because the location may be some kind of a hot spot for what happened. And she happened to be away from the counter area, so that's why she didn't go with them. But that never came back. And then you had the whole thing with the lens. I, mean, I thought that geography, geography thing made a lot of sense. But it never comes back. At least not yet. And then there's also the lens situation. I remember that. Because that stuck with me as well. They made it seem so important in the beginning. The doctor guy. that you know, no, It was all music and no words and everything. And they're talking about it. And he was like on the chalkboard. He was like, no, we have to go talk to her now. And then she comes out and he wants to talk to her. And you know, oh, he's that he's going to be the guy who looks crazy but actually knows what he's talking about. But nope. Never came back. She calls them up and they think she's some Asriel connection bullshit. And holy shit, I was nuts, right? But then there's a part of you that wants to think, what if it's true? What if it is? And that's how I end up joining the guilty remnant. I know it. I know it. I know that's how that's, that's how that would happen, right? Because you want to believe that maybe this is real. Because they all seem so convincing. All these people seem so convincing. They almost sell me on the possibility that maybe they do know. Just like Tom was saying about the guilty remnant. You know, like, maybe they know something. That, that's when you know you've been there too long. You start to get absorbed into the... Into the... You get... You get Caught up in the frenzy, you know, mob mentality kind of thing, because they just seem so convincing. They seem like they know what's going on, and you know, you want to just you want you want to think maybe they do, or maybe I'm the only one who sees it too. So I'm special too, because because I see that they know something that I don't know, and no one else understands them. You know, you know, you want to be part of the plot, but turns out you just join a cult. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Uh, that is freaking. Let's let's get started with uh, season two, season three, episode two. Don't be ridiculous. Don't know what that has to do with the show, but we will find out. I am sure. Okay, let's go. A lot of thinking on this one. Oh my god! Is that new theme song for us? I didn't hear it in the first episode. It wasn't in the first episode. Oh my god! But the same uh, pictures. Why is it so happy? <laughs> commercial <laughs> like like uh like a like a sitcom from the 90s or something you know what i think it's because the last season this i think this season will be about overcoming your oh my god it's him overcoming the horrors you know We're, oh my gosh he's gary Busey still there oh, ah, what? wasn't she in the parking lot she was the one who had him slap the guy stop the guy <laughs> and he was gone yeah well, how's that work dimmed Wait, out what? He literally fell off the pillar. He's lying. She's Ask lying. What? Where is he, Matt? That poor woman lived across the bridge in that horrible encampment for three years. Her loyalty and devotion. I, I've never it's seen anything like it. It's incredible. Except when you did it for Mary. He rewarded in your Thank Excuse reward. me. Hello. You know what happened to him? What really happened? Leave him alone. Have a good day. God bless. Crack this open, okay? When you came in last month to get the cast, one of the orderlies, he said he saw you in the parking lot before you came in. He said that he saw you slam your car door on your arm. Now, why in God's name would I do that? You're crazy. You're still crazy. Why would you do Hello? that? Hello? 
Hi. Are you serious? Would you like to see your children again? What? What? She's gonna hang up, man. She almost there. You don't have to trace me. I'm at the Crown Central in St. Louis. Just ask he, for Mark Lynn He Baker. wants her to find him. What? This is geography, guys? What? Whoa. She's been lied to so many times of the promise that she could see her kids again, you know? Do it George Brevity, you alone. It's him. Hey, George, it's Nordurs. I thought maybe they did it every year. But maybe this is unique because they think seven years is like some superstitious thing, right? Like seven years bad luck. Hey. Maybe that's what it is. They think seven years bad luck. And she did kiss the lips of Kevin. Oh, gosh. And lo, it was good. <laughs> May I help you, ma'am? Uh, this isn't letting me hit no. Uh, Anne, are you traveling with an infant today? No. What does it look like? Uh, my name right May now. I use another kiosk, please? Oh, so scary. Yeah. Can you imagine having to mop those floors and you have to look down like that? They just called from downstairs. Please, come on in. I feel like I've seen him before, but a long time ago. I don't know the show, so is this supposed to be hey, the actual actor? What? what are you doing? There are a couple types of radiation and neutron. Neutron is rare, and they name it. L-A-D-R. They found L-A-D-R at departure sites, but Letter. it's a footprint. Well, what if they could make more? Recreate it? If they could recreate it. <laughs> yeah. Go where? Go wherever they went. What? Wherever they went. 2%. <laughs> I just reading off, I see the same thing as he's saying. So they built it, he says this it. device. Yes, ma'am. I felt the same way you do right now. When I heard it the first time, her name was Lauren. Where's Lauren now? She went through through 119 <laughs> testimonials. Each and every one of them had to pass an IQ test to qualify. There's wow. a Nobel laureate in there. And I think you may be suicidal. Three go, one stays. Me. You know what the odds of that are? What happened was arbitrary. It was purposeless. I don't want to kill myself. I want to take some fucking control. So it looks like she broke her own arm for some reason. And something happened to Lily. She's gonna stare at the kids now. It's a bunch Hi. of kids. Who are you? That's not Lily, right? Nora? Oh shit. What? Christine? Christine? Hi. What the hell? What? She came back then. You still got the finger shovel? <laughs> no, nothing works. Oh, so awkward. Embarrassing. I prepaid the fucking machine! What do you want me to do? <laughs> it's that music, man. That music is like a torrent, uh, like a storm. It speaks a lot to her psychological state. Oh, Hi. shit. Evangelina. Oh, my gosh. I thought we weren't going to see her again. So she was, so, so she should, just so she could wear the cast? What were you covering up? Um... <laughs> my kids names for the rest of my life people would come up to me and they would say oh what a nice tattoo uh -huh. who are aaron and jeremy i'm nora cursed asking me about my poor departed children uh -huh. how are you not going crazy after evie i got the barrier i bought a trampoline <laughs> and i bought a trampoline dance with the mantis no ah! slim Hey, it's not like a show. Uh, George Lopez thing, right? I just got off my shift. You want to go grab a drink? Yeah, can I take a rain check? I just got back from the business trip. Business trip? Christine called you. Christine just wants to know if she should be worried. She came after me, and I gave her child back, and now she doesn't know who I am. So no, Tom, nobody has to worry about me. I spent the next ten years of my life knocking on some asshole's fucking door. So I wish they wouldn't have told me because I was already where I belong. Well, do you know what I wish? I wish you'd never left her for me. I didn't leave Lily for you, Nora. I left her for my dad. I didn't even know you existed. Yeah. But freaking Christine doesn't get to just come in, come back in like that and just take it back. It's bullshit. Is this uh, Kinko's? Can I print a photo from this? She gonna show me, buddy. Oh, why? You are a heartless bitch. Because right, she can't have any fun, neither can they. <laughs> oh, God. Hey, Nora, what's up? I just do it to feel. Uh... <laughs> I can't die, Nora. 
I don't want to die. That's a wicked Let's tattoo. Let's have a baby. What? Baby. <laughs> I fixed asphyxiation. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> We're crazy. Are you happy? Yes. I'm happy too. Let's not fuck that up, okay? How about a baby screw that up? Australia. Australia. Yes, I can do that. What? I need to go to Australia. <laughs> Just for a couple of days. Can I come with you? Yeah. What? Really? We're going to Australia? I knew it! Whoa! Oh my god, Australia. I knew it, I knew it, I knew it. Ah, what the hell? Alright, why? Why is it the first thing we gotta see? The well, dad should be here too, right? Amazing. Let's see how our neighbors down under have dealt with the... Uh, May I ask why you're blocking my driveway? Are you chief of police? I can explain everything. No, no, no. I don't want you to explain fucking anything. I want you to get the fuck off my property. <laughs> what the? <laughs> no, it's you not. friends. <laughs> friends who knock you and tie you off. Who you are. He's the Jesus Christ. <gasps> no, they're gonna drown him. Christ, that lady kind of... It's him. No, that lady kind of looks like... Lady Kyle looks like the one from the, um, the beginning. Ugh. Get in. You need to wake up now. You right now, Maria? Hey! Don't tell me that's a dad. Holy shit! What are you ladies up to? Uh, what? What in the world is going on? Okay, well. The show is as crazy as ever. So let me, so let's start with the start from the beginning. Um, let's start with the so Nora got a message uh, from a baker or something something, and he led him to apparently they are building a a machine that supposedly can send you to wherever those people went, and they've been 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 working on it for a little while. I guess it's taken seven years for them to finally. Perfect. No, they're not, they're not perfected. They're still in the process of figuring it out. I feel like this whole thing's gonna end on. Is this whole thing gonna end on the fourteenth or uh, fourteen days from now, when the departure, when the when the on the anniversary? I feel like there's a there's a connection there. You know, people are waiting for it to happen again, and in a way it might if the machine is real. Of course, Nora, Nora, she she excuses it as another fake, right? Because why well, why wouldn't you? Everybody just seems crazy anymore. Who even suggests they have an answer? But I think the reason why she is going to, it almost feels like this whole show has been building up to her finally making that move to, you know, accept somebody who says they know what they're talking about and go with it. I think the difference with this one, how come the others didn't work out for her is because, she, well, first of all, she gets, she really gets pissed off when anything religious gets mentioned. So she doesn't. That's why ads are and all that stuff. That all those things kind of um, upset her, and then she didn't want to deal with it. She didn't want to. She didn't like the God answer. But this guy is promising a scientific um, point of view. I think that's what the difference is this time. All the testimonials are from people who are sane of mind. They went through psychiatric tests. They want to make sure that when the, when this happens. They want to show people that this is real because the people who are 120 people or whatever can't be wrong, right? Or that's, that's the idea or something. Now, they said they can bring them over there, but can they bring them back? So does that mean that some of them already went through, but they haven't come back or what? I don't know. Why her specifically, by the way? Why do they want Nora? Of all people. Is it because she lost... Yeah, that's a good question. Why did they choose her? She didn't say why. She didn't ask them why me. She just kind of went with it. Is it because she has because she lost so many people? I don't know. Maybe you know the specific circumstance. Also, because she works for the uh, maybe because she also works for the um, DSD or departure, whatever it's called. The um, that place she works at. Maybe um, maybe something to do with that. That they, you know, she's a strong skeptic in that sense, and for her to be, to, 
to validate that project would be amazing. I don't know. I don't know. But they chose her for a reason. Not really sure why, though. I wouldn't, I'm surprised she didn't ask why. Maybe she didn't want to know. She didn't want to answer to that. But I think that got her thinking about Lily. And she went back. Uh, she uh, she went to see Lily. And uh, that's a whole other thing. So now we know why she... Now we know what happened to Lily. She was giving back to her original mom, Christine, who had left her in the freaking bathroom to die. It's awful, and it's not fair that she just... I don't think that Christine should have got the baby back. Or, uh, at the very least, she doesn't get to just go on like, and nothing, nothing happened. It's bullshit. Well, what are the odds that she would have a change of heart that early, too? Just come back. Come back before... I mean, before, you know... Years have gone. If it had been years, definitely you don't get you don't get to just come back like that too late. But she did come back pretty early. It's so sad to see Nora talking to her, and she's just, "Who are you?" That's horrible. I feel like that. Come on, was it was she really only only with her for a very little, a very short amount of time? Come on, there must be some. She didn't tell him about them or anything. Nothing. That's bullshit. I guess they didn't have her that long. But it's still, uh, I feel bad for Nora. She should get some kind of validation for what she did. But I guess the, uh, from what I understand, Nora testif- Nora didn't, didn't, um, she didn't, what's the word? She didn't argue against it. I forgot what the word is, but she didn't make a plea for the baby. She gave it back to the mom. And that's the only reason I think she took it. If Nora had made any kind of plea saying, no, this baby was neglected by this lady. She left her in the bathroom. Tom can, can We have the witness. Tom can contest to that. He brought him to our house. We took care of him. She doesn't get to get the baby back. I think that they might have had a, they might have had a case. But apparently because Nora didn't do anything about it, I think that's why she got the baby back. I think that's, I think that's what, they're, they're basically what they're saying. The only reason she got it back is because Nora was complacent, complicit in the act. In which case, she only has herself to blame for that situation now. I don't like how Tom had to come back to go, you know, do I have to be worried? Bullshit, you know? I think Christina's the one who abandoned not me. But, yeah, that got her thinking about the whole thing. And I think Lily was supposed to be, like, her redemption. She was ready to leave everything behind, drop Kevin like a, like a sack of potatoes and run off to who knows where but she saw the baby on the doorstep and it changed her life I think she saw it as a second chance for some reason uh, not Kevin but the baby was her reason for living I guess her reason for not running all, running away again but after having to get the baby I think she got lost she's lost now I think she was good in season 2 and she didn't go with those other people because she had Isabel she had because she had Lily she wasn't you know, she had something to hold on to. So she didn't need to go with someone else to find answers or whatever. But because she lost Lily now, now she has a reason to do this. Which is weird because what was the purpose of Lily then? If this is all that ends up being, she just... That's so sad. Why did they do that? She thought she was going to be part of the family and then she just gets ripped away from them and it's like nothing happened. I don't know. I don't, there's got to be a point to that. That's terrible. The guy fell from the sky. The guy, uh, the guy fell from the tower. It doesn't look like his. He he just had it was he had, he had his own reasons for being up there suffering or whatever. It reminds me of the. It reminds me of the those people who were on the rooftops in the first episode. That he was waiting for something to happen, and then dies of a heart attack and falls over, and she had to kill the freaking legend and all that. I don't know. I understand. No, I don't know. She she didn't, but she didn't do it out of a kindness of her heart. She did it to piss people off. I feel it's just a... I don't get to be happy, so you don't get to be happy either. That that freaking face she makes, man. She's When she gets mad, she goes crazy. She still snaps. You know, she will she ever fully recover from that kind of thing? Probably not. <laughs> Probably not. But maybe she's had enough and this is it. She can try it one last time to do something about it. And like I said, I think that what makes this one different is that it's it's uh it is scientific this time. So she's hoping that this might be the one, because she she doesn't want a god answer at all. 
So she's hoping this is it. We don't know if it's it. I don't know. It's some. There's been so many lies that we don't know what to believe anymore. So everyone looks crazy at this point. You're just hoping because he looks legit. But so did Wayne, right? So did so did Patty, sort of. So did the, those geography guys, ge- geology guys, and uh, the other guy. Well, they all look kind of. They all look legitimate to me. So who knows anymore? I hope this guy is telling the truth because this would be incredible. But the show never gives us direct answers and I don't think we want any I think it's gonna be more ambiguous than that you know we won't know whether she what did she or didn't she or if she does do this whole thing but I feel like we're not gonna know for sure cause that's how the show works right nothing is ever it's never um, concrete answers you, it leaves you up to decide so anyway <laughs> uh, something interesting about Lily is well not in that Lily anymore apparently but Something I was just thinking about, I found interesting was, uh, actually I thought about this earlier, last episode or so. But Lily is the is a she's part of a new generation who was born into, after the departures. You know, so for her, she seems like she'd be okay, she'd be okay. I mean, I think that that's bodes well for the kids at least, because I don't think she'll miss it. She won't know what she missed, right? She'll have born into this world after the departure. So for her, it's just an urban legend. Uh, this this thing that happened. It's the people who had to experience it who are going to be traumatized. But I think that suggests... Because she seems fine to me, you know? I think it suggests that in the, the kids... Uh, eventually, a hundred years from now, everybody from this generation is gone. The kids who have recovered from it, it'll never be... They they will never... They, they probably won't dwell on it like these kids. Like the, like the people who lost people. You know what I mean? People like Nora who are going to suffer for her forever until they die, probably. I don't know if they'll ever get any real solace, but but the kids will be fine. The kids will be all right. Spe- like kids like her. That, the next generation will be fine because they're not going to have experience. It just, this is just going to be who they, how, they, how they were. And, it's, you know, yeah, basically. Uh, but it's interesting, you know, her being part of a new generation of kids. I wonder if they're ever going to, I wonder if they're going to put, bring it, do, that, do anything with that. Matt is apparently she left. That's terribly horrifying. I swear that her, her name was written on the community wall though, but it looks like she left him. That's terrible. Uh, but the the only saving grace of that is that Matt doesn't look too upset. It's like he accepted that as part of it. He chose. I think he chose his religion over her in a way. His devotion to his religion was stronger. And he had hoped that hers would be too, but she just wanted to, you know, go outside of the city every now and then or something. Crazy, right? <laughs> uh, he just couldn't let her just go out there, I guess. We didn't get to see that, though. So it's, we just kind of hear it from her. But it's just terrible because it, it doesn't seem like she wanted, you know. Yeah, she just seemed cold about it, too. It's, it's weird. We never get to see them arguing about it or anything. I don't get any emotion from her. It's just, well, I'm going to leave it. Because he doesn't want me to go, so I'm going to go. That's it. That's it. That's what that amounts to. There better be more of that, because that's terrible. Just, I'm gone. I'm leaving. You guys have fun with your religion and everything. I'm gone. After all the shit that he he had done for her to have it not reciprocated, I mean, I thought that was going to be the end of it. That was going to be his reward for everything he did, but it still goes on. Is there going to be anything? I hope that there's more to that story, because... Uh, Matt uh, it's that's just awful if Matt had done all of that and she would have been stick by him after all that it's terrible but at least he's not that beat up about it he's kind of coping in his own way he's too busy with his, with his shit uh, and Nora and Evangeline they're on a uh, never, Nora and uh, I think it was Evangeline or whatever they're on a trampoline Bounces up and down. That's really weird scene. Okay. Uh, now we get to the last, the biggie, the big part here. It looks like they are going to Australia finally. Is it just the two of them or are they all going? Uh, well, I guess everybody's doing their own thing, yeah? So maybe it's just the two of them. Nobody's actually at the house. Or maybe, I don't know about Tom. Probably not. Yeah, they're probably all gone. Uh, except for maybe, uh, no. John has Michael, so... I guess there's nobody at the house or the two of them. And I think about it. Jill's off at college. They're all off somewhere. So I guess he's just moved on. 
They're gonna go to Australia, and the kids are okay. It looks like. I wonder if we're gonna. I mean, I don't know. I don't know we're gonna, how much we're gonna see of them. But they're going to Australia, and crazy shit just happened. Freaking these psycho ladies in the in the in the, in the desert or whatever. The the outback. They killed the freaking chief of police or whoever that guy was. Some police officer dude. I think it was chief. They killed him. Uh, in order to what? Because they thought he was Kevin. It's funny because they know Kevin's name. But his name happened to be Kevin too. What a coincidence. And they drowned him because they thought he was the freaking Kevin Kevin. How do they know his name? I don't know. But I want to say they're crazy. But they know Kevin's name. So I don't know what to think. And they were in the past thing. Uh, they were in... They were in the last episode too, wasn't she? She said, do you know the name Kevin or something like that? What does it mean to you? Does she just ask everybody that thing? How long has she been doing this? I don't, I don't understand exactly yet how that that ending scene connects to all of this. Uh, one thing I took away from that though is being a messianic, messianic, messianic figure is now that it's cracked up to be because apparently people are going to want to if they think you're a Jesus Christ figure they're going to think they're going to they're gonna want a proof and they're going to drown you if they have to get it and if you're not the person you say you are well you're going to die so shit even being Christ is not all it's cracked up to be is it I'm guessing they thought he was Jesus Christ or whatever you know oh sh no wait wait well it just occurred to me we don't know what time period the Australian thing is taking place in that can't be right now that lady looks like she hasn't aged I just realized something is that Australian part is every is every episode going to end in Australia and it all takes place in the future and I think about it this one, that lady hasn't aged so I wonder if that's the same that is her isn't it I wonder if that was taking place in the future because they didn't show a time stamp or anything Nora is old, and that lady is there old as well, because it's in the future, and she's asking about Kevin, like she was asking in the other episode. She's still trying to find Kevin and drown him, apparently, with her buddies. No, no, but then what about, what about uh, the, oh yeah, the freaking, freaking Scott Glenn, the freaking, Kevin's dad is right there, but he, but he really looked old, so I can't tell what year he's in. But apparently he's hanging out with the freaking ladies and stuff. What the hell's going on there? He doesn't know what they were doing though. So, that is... I think that might be the same time period. It could be. What the hell's Kevin then? Uh, and I wonder if the book was done. Is that what happened? Did Matt finish his book and that's how they know Kevin's name? Because they were reading the book or something? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. We don't have enough information yet. Uh, this is uh, Leftovers Season 3 Episode 2, Don't Be Ridiculous. Now I know what the title means. And it's um, taking uh, forever again. This, 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 this show has so much going on that it warrants having long commentaries. You just can't help it. This, every episode's getting longer and longer as I, every time I do one of these now for Leftovers. Uh, but, you know, bear with me. You can always skip through if you want to or whatever. But... If you want to hear me go on about it, um, whatever it is, I'm gonna, I'm pretty much, I'm just gonna leave it in there because, um, I think it was all valid stuff to say. I'll see you guys in the next one.